What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with my all T, all shade, Real Housewives of Miami, Season 4, Episode 2 review. Want to remind you guys that this Saturday, my movie, Paper Heart, will be available for streaming on Tubi. If you do not know what Tubi is, it is a streaming platform. You can download the app on your phone, your computer, your um, laptop, your iPad, um, on your smart TVs. Download the Tubi app. It is free, free content to watch. You don't have to pay for anything, and you can stream my movie, Paper Heart. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Please stream it as many times as possible. Really want these numbers to be high, you guys. We really want to make a statement here, so please support and watch my movie, Paper Heart, this Saturday on Tubi. Now, let's get into um, my Season 4 Episode 2 review of The Real Housewives of Miami, which you can currently watch the first two episodes on Peacock. Peacock is also a streaming um, platform that you can watch on all of those different devices that I've already named. Okay, so we pick up exactly where we left off on um, Episode 1 with Alexia Marisol and Alexia Le Gay Homeboy reaching out to her deceased husband Herman's lover child. She found out that when her husband died that he was actually on the low low and gay and had a lover child. So she reached out to the man because she wanted to talk and really get the tea on what, what the fuck was going on. So um, the guy responds and said that yeah, you know, when I get back into town, I don't have any problems talking to her. Let's meet up. So she like, wow, this is really going down. It is about to happen. And where I saw, like, I could not do it if I was her. Um, I would want to know, too. I would want to know. I would want to meet up with this person. I would really want to know who I was laying next to every night. Because Alexia is saying she had no clue that this man was on the down low, that he was gay or whatever. So I would really want to know, like, who was this man that I was married to for all of these years? Like, what the fuck was going on? Was I just his beard? Did he ever love me? Were you the first person that he's ever done this with? Or in multiple people? Like, there are a lot of things that I would seriously want to know. So I don't blame Alexia for that. So then we see Lisa and Lenny go out for his birthday. They go to Prime 1000 in Miami, which is a staple. And they actually end up running into Liza, Larsa Pippen child, who's out on a date or whatever. And they say hi and giggle and kiki and all that. And then they go sit down at their own table. And she makes a toast. She was like, happy 56th birthday, baby. And he was like, I'm not 56. <laughs> and she was like, how old are you? 55? He was like, yeah. Like, he was so mad that this lady didn't even know how old she was. And that was just another sign that he looking at her like, you just are not tapped in. Like, this is just not that. It is not it. And the whole vibe from him was just off. Once again, she's steady trying to say how they've come back from you know being separated him having an emotional affair with another woman and how they're doing so good now and she was like you know you still love me and you you, you still attracted and he like yeah 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 i am mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. it was just so off between them like he is not emotionally there whatever happened between him and this woman child i feel like it's still going on who because he just don't seem like he is just there and you can tell all from the television and i feel bad for the woman when she watched this shit back how embarrassing it is because it is still trouble in paradise it don't matter that you have finally been able to give him two children be a surrogate it is some shit still going down that man is not happy in this relationship and it was honestly cringy to watch so um we then um catch up with alexia and her new man ty she is engaged to be married to somebody else now. She is just so madly in love with this man. She just says that, you know, this is the happiest she's ever been. Um, he's the first man that, you know, hasn't lied to her because she says her first two husbands were liars. And she's just so shocked that she's um, falling madly deeply in love with a gringo, which is a white man because she's Cuban. And she's just so happy and she can't wait to marry him. Um, but I'm still like, well... What's going on with Todd and Peter, your son? Like, I want to know what the fuck happened between these two because you still got that as an issue. So, um, then we see Nicole talking to her baby daddy because that's exactly what he is. Her boyfriend, her roommate, her lover <laughs> about having a sushi party. Um, and she wants to invite all the ladies or whatever. And, um, uh, 
she was like, but you know, I just don't want to have the questions of people asking me when we're going to get married. He was like, who would ask that? Nobody ever brings it up. He was like, nobody has ever said that. And she keeps on playing it off in her confessionals. Like she don't care about being married and how she feels like marriage is antiquated, this, that, and the third. But like I said on the other review, if you felt like marriage was antiquated, you wouldn't have the need for him to clarify you or verify you as a wife or you call him a husband when you all don't have the paperwork. And then the fact that you bringing it up Talking about people going to be asking you when y'all getting married, this, that, and the third or whatever. You are pressed. You want to marry that man. You just trying to play it and dumb it down because you don't want to seem like you thirsty and pressed. But it's obvious that this is bothering you that he has not proposed to you. That is an issue. Especially knowing that he has been married before and you've been married before. Y'all have a child with each other. Y'all do live with each other. So why hasn't he proposed to you? And I think that is bothering her, but she keeps on trying to play it off like it ain't really a thing, but it's obvious that it is. And I just wish she would keep it a book. Like, girl, you feel some type of way. So, I just have to give a shout out to Gertie and that red confessional leather look, baby. It was giving me everything that it needed to give. I love that red bustier corset kind of top that she had on. The wig... It was it was a step up from what Kiki had on last week's episode. Looked way better than Kiki wig, but it still needed a little shift and a little bit better lace. She needed some black girl to come in there and really get it what it needed to be. But that red look was everything. Yes, ma'am. So um we then find out that Alexia has not asked Peter um to walk her down the aisle yet when she meets up with Gertie to go over the wedding plans and venue um you know because once again Peter and Todd don't speak uh but in her last wedding Peter was the one that walked her down the aisle so she really wants him and her son Frankie to do it this time but because of this rift she doesn't really know if that's gonna happen and I was like I don't think it's gonna happen sis and you might be holding your breath for nothing so then we see Alexa meet up with Peter we have not seen Peter in all these years he is a grown 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 ass man and he is fine he gives me Brody Jenner vibes or whatever very attractive tatted up um dude or whatever um we find out that Peter got married. He moved to Paris for a while. He's back home in the States and he's going through a divorce. And Alexia is wondering like, is he putting those emotions off onto her? Like, why are you up here getting married to somebody else? This, that, and that. I'm like, girl, stop it, Alexia. Stop trying to make one be two. That ain't the issue. The issue is that your son and your new man had an altercation of sorts or an argument or whatever. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing, ma'am. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Stop trying to make excuses for why your son don't fuck with this man. So... Um, she brings up him walking her down the aisle and he was like, you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he was like, no, he was like, maybe ask your uncle to do it. Hell, ask Frankie to do it, but it ain't happening. He was like, you know, just because you want to run off into the sunset and be a stepmama and, you know, be married to this man don't mean that I have to be happy with it or include it. And he's right. It doesn't, he doesn't have to be happy about it or include it. Um, so, uh, he also, she was like, you know, she was like just sitting there nodding her head kind of is, she was accepting of it, but you could tell she was very hurt by it. Cause she's in the middle between these two guys and she even says, and you know, I'm in the middle between the two most important men in my life, my son and my, you know, my new fiance. And then she brings up the day of the wedding. He was like, shit, I don't even know if I'm going to be here. I might be in Tokyo. And that really hurt her feelings because he is not fucking with her. And this wedding, which really made me on some what happened between them two that he hates this man so much because I'm going to judge. I'm going to judge, baby. I'm going to judge when I find out who is in the right and who is in the wrong. And if Alexia is in the right or is in the wrong. So it's the day of the sushi party at Nicole's house. Loved Nicole's outfit. Loved her hoop Chanel black and gold earrings. They were giving me everything that I needed and wanted. Her outfit was so cute. Loved her little blonde bob. Everything. I had a problem though. They had this like 
model or whatever in Asian garb or whatever, kimono and the umbrella in one of those tables where they serve stuff around the person. But when I looked at that lady, that lady didn't look not one bit like she was Asian, Korean, Japanese, none of that. And it was very much cultural, cultural appropriation going on. I was like, girl, you ain't even Asian. First of all, but you know, it's sushi. We're going to let you do what you do. But having that lady with that table, that was just doing team too much for me. Like, you should know better by now. So, all the ladies arrive. And on episode one, I forgot to mention that um, Kiki and Marisol kind of got into it at Larsa's little, um, pool party. It was over the dumbest topic about goat milk or some shit. And... Marisol made a comment about uh, Kiki being less than smart or whatever. It was just a dumb conversation, period. So, Larsa brings it up and asks, you know, have they spoken? And she was like, no, we have not spoken. So, she... Marisol calls Kiki over was like, you know, can we talk privately, you know, and she apologizes for the way that she came at her and Kiki apologized to her and was like, you know, I'm just going through a lot, you know, my engagement just broke off. And so, um... Mar Marisol was like, you know, if you need to talk, need anything, I'm here for you. And they hugged it out. Because what they got into it about was honestly really stupid. Um, I can't wait to learn more about Kiki. And I want Kiki to get better hair. Um, so then Alexia sits down and talks to Marisol. It was Marisol. And I think Adriana and Julia. I think it was those, them sitting down. And, um, no, I'm sorry. I skipped a part. So everybody's talking and mingling and Alexia and Anthony, Nicole's baby daddy are talking. And he was like, you know, asking her, is she excited about her wedding? She was like, yeah, when you going to plan yours? And I was like, Lord Jesus, here we go. And he was like, I mean, we're fine the way we are. Nobody's in a rush to get married. Like why everybody always got to get married? Like he was so defensive, like so defensive, like. Obviously, he's the one that don't want to get married, and Nicole secretly does, but she's just playing along with him to pacify him and to not seem like she's so pressed about it. But just his his response was like, okay, nigga, calm the fuck down. Like, what the fuck is the problem? But, yeah, he don't want to marry sis. For whatever reason, he is not trying to marry old girl. So, um, then, like I said, Alexis sits down with the girls and she finally opens up about what happened between Peter and Ty because she never told anybody what transpired or whatever. So, apparently, one day, Peter came over and he was smoking weed and he smoked weed with Frankie. Remember, her son, Frankie, has some disabilities from a really bad car accident that he had 10 years ago that left him in a coma for about six months. So, um... They got high together, and a while later, during that same day, they were all sitting at the table. I think she said they were having dinner. Next thing she knew, Frankie, her son, just dropped on the table. He had dropped on the table like he died, and everybody freaked the fuck out. They had to resuscitate him. The ambulance was called, um, found out that his blood pressure had went very low or very high, one of them, because of, you know, he smoked too much weed, and Peter wasn't paying attention that he had smoked too much, and apparently... Um, Todd ended up going off on Peter and she said that he said some very mean things to Peter and then that's where it cut off. Now, she was like, she kept on saying that it was in the heat of the moment, everything was just high octane and whatever, but my thing is, that's not his son, first of all. Yes, the situation was fucked up because he put his little brother, who was basically grown, but mentally not grown, in a fucked up precarious situation but at the end of the day i want to know what these mean things were that he said to peter because that's not his place he a grown-ass man and like i said you're not his father to be talking to him crazy now you can express your concerns with her but to come at her son sideways and I, like i said i need to know what these mean things were because that's really gonna form my opinion if I'm going to be looking at Alexia sideways, but still being with this man, he talk crazy to your child. Okay? Because ain't nobody going to talk crazy to Kyrie. No. And I want to know, like, what these mean things were, were said that 
she still with him because she keep on saying it was very mean it was very mean but it was just in the moment now in the moment is when you say how you really fucking feel so i can't wait to find out exactly what the fuck was said honey because child cheese alexia you seem like you're making another mistake darling but yeah so that's my review on episode two of the real housewives of miami let me know what you thought about the episode make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button also once again make sure you guys tune in this saturday on tubi to watch my debut film paper heart i love you guys and i will see you on the next video bye